Cleveland, Baker Mayfield, still on the team, awkward dance, no trade last week during the draft. The Panthers and the Browns were talking about it. The financial difference was far too vast between what the Browns wanted to pay Baker Mayfield as a portion of his $18.8 million guaranteed option year salary and what the Panthers were willing to pay. Couldn't get it done. It's over. Where does Baker Mayfield go? What do the Browns do? It, it occurred to us earlier this week, Peter, and let's start here before we get down the rabbit hole of what is going on between the Browns and Baker Mayfield. I think the Browns have to at least have on their radar screen the possibility they need this guy for all of 2022 if Deshaun Watson should get suspended for all of 2022. And the re- eureka moment for me last week happened when Major League Baseball suspended Trevor Bauer for two years for off-field sexual assault allegations that didn't result in any prosecution, didn't result in a permanent restraining order being entered against him as filed by the individual who made the initial allegations. There are other allegations Major League Baseball investigated. Different facts, but similar core claims of someone crossing the line in a sexual arena Maybe Deshaun Watson is going to be out for all of 2022. And maybe the Browns need Baker Mayfield. We're going to pay him $18.8 million guaranteed. We may as well make him the quarterback all year. Jacoby Brissett's the six-game guy. Baker Mayfield may be the 17-game guy. Maybe they need to find a way to work this out and have Baker Mayfield ready to go. Your thoughts on that? You don't think that's untenable right now? Like I, I, I do. Think it's untenable. I do. But from the Browns' perspective, I could look at it and say, hey, this guy wants to make $18.8 million. Show up and work for it. I mean, I suppose so. Tell me what sort of... um, What what would happen if you invite the Fox back into the hen house? Hmm. And I don't mean at all that Baker Mayfield is is going to lose on purpose or I I don't mean that at all, but I mean, you know, you preach chemistry on your team and, and all that other stuff. I, I, and I'm, and look, this is really sort of a new thought because all along I've been thinking this is, it's unworkable. You just got to get him out. That's why you signed Jacoby Brissett. Just play him and take the consequences. And look, I the way I look at this is, Mike, that that to me, the 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 Cleveland Browns have sort of made their bed right now with Baker Mayfield. One of the things that's happening right now that you're seeing is truly nobody really wants Baker Mayfield. I mean, if he were just sitting there on the side of the road and he were just He were available to anybody. Would the Carolina Panthers pick him up? My guess is probably yes. But they might be the only team. You know, Seattle seems like their view, the Seahawks' view is, listen, he's going to complicate matters here. We'd like to give Drew Locke a real chance to see if he can be a, a quarterback. You know, he's done some things. I don't think he can. You probably don't think he can. I think they want to. Plus, they're a running team, number one. You know, Seattle and Baltimore, those teams are going to be running teams. And so it almost complicates matters to put them on any of these teams. And I get what you're saying. If he wants to make his $18.9 million, make him earn it. And I get it. I understand it. But man, that's that sounds good. But how complex would it be if that's actually what happened? Extremely complex. And the story that landed yesterday from Jake Trotter of ESPN.com that took a deep dive into the lingering hard feelings between Baker Mayfield and the Browns. And I, I know that source guessing is frowned upon in this establishment, but the fingerprints of Baker Mayfield and his camp are all over that article. Think about the incentives at this point. Do the Browns have any incentive to try to stoke this thing? No, they want it to settle down. So they have the luxury of time. So they can squat on the situation, wait for a trade possibility to arise that 
isn't there right now. Wait for the possibility of a serious injury to happen to a quarterback elsewhere, and then the Browns and the 49ers are racing to be the ones to trade their incumbent quarterbacks to that team. Or if all else fails and Deshaun Watson is suspended for a full year, have Baker Mayfield in a mindset where he will play a mutually beneficial situation where the Browns need a quarterback and Mayfield needs a place where he can have the kind of year that sets him up for a big payday. That's why it's in his interest. Carolina, Seattle, Cleveland. Give me Cleveland to find Baker Mayfield. I position myself better for a long-term deal if I'm the quarterback there this year. However, Peter, I agree with you. It is untenable. And when you read the specific allegations made via unnamed sources who spoke to Jake Trotter of ESPN, you get the pretty clear impression that Baker Mayfield has no desire to be in Cleveland. And I interpreted that article as the next chess move, the next effort by Baker to make it clear to the Browns This is not going to end well if you try to do this. And I don't think the Browns care. I think their chief strategy officer, Paul D. Podesta, author of the infamous now four-year plan, has a four-month plan that they intend to fully implement. And, Peter, one of the wrinkles may be, hey, let's, let's, let's nudge this guy a little. Let's put him in a position where maybe he acts up. And we can cut him for reasons unrelated to skill, injury, or cap. Do what the Ravens did to Earl Thomas a couple of years ago. Cut him for personal conduct that is detrimental to the interests of the team or whatever the magic words are from the CBA. And we don't have to pay him anything. Maybe that's what the Browns are hoping for as an off-ramp. Because you know what? They don't have to worry about him going to Pittsburgh anymore now that they have Kenny Pickett. So maybe that's part of the strategy that Dee Podesta has concocted. I don't know. But I agree with you. It is untenable at this point to have Baker Mayfield as the quarterback of the Browns, but the Browns are not willing to let go of that rope. You know, I've gone through this a lot of times and said the Browns should do this, the Browns should do that, whatever. You know, it it appears to me that no one right now is actually going to offer anything to the Cleveland Browns for Baker Mayfield. Maybe it'll be a face-saving swap of sixth and seventh round picks or some horse crap, uh, you know, compensation that really means nothing whatsoever, okay? But in my opinion right now, after the enmity that is flying between both sides, My feeling right now, because obviously it seems to me from what we've seen in recent weeks, Baker Mayfield is trying to force the Browns hand to releasing him. And so if that be the case, if I were the Browns, I just make an announcement. We're going to take a little sabbatical here. Unless the team contacts us, we're not going to do anything with Baker right now. The reason you do that, Mike, is you then say, okay, everybody, we're hanging on to Baker Mayfield. And what we are going to do is we're going to wait until on August 29th, quarterback X slips on a banana peel in (laughs) franchise X. And then they need to go get Baker Mayfield. Okay? So why not do that? Why just... Why not just excommunicate him from your building? Just say, listen, you know, we're not going to find you, nothing like that. Just stay away. And when the time comes, we will uh, let you go. Or we'll, we'll we'll find a place for you. We're not giving you away. We're not releasing you. And so that's probably what I would do right now. They are too deep into the he said, she said stuff that is going on right now. That the easiest thing in the world would be to cut him. And I don't, Mike, I don't even know if he's on the street right now. You tell me if he's on the street right now, what team is going to move aggressively to to bring him in? Maybe Carolina, maybe. I'm not even positive Carolina. Well, especially since they drafted Matt Corral once they failed to trade for Baker Mayfield because then they'd have to deal with Sam Darnold. And I 
I, I'd say Carolina would be the most likely destination just because there isn't any other one that I point to and say, okay, that makes sense. Maybe the Texans, if they could get him for nothing, maybe, but they could have gotten him as part of the Deshaun Watson trade. But th- at that point, he had a value attached to him that maybe the Texans didn't want to recognize. If they could get him for the veteran minimum of $1.035 million with the Browns paying the rest, then then that could potentially be attractive to the Texans. I'm just not I'm not – Certain that. By the way, the whole slipped on the banana peel thing, it takes me back, and I say this knowing full well the piano music is going to start. But I just remember that growing up. Like that was the that was the thing. The banana peel was the hazard of slipping and falling. Nothing else, nothing else, not motor oil or water or or somebody's shoes that got left behind. It was always slipped on a banana peel. And Peter, in 56 years of life. I'm not aware of anyone actually slipping on a banana peel ever. Thank you for playing the music. It's not it's not a normal I guess day for it's me a, until I, I guess it. it's a I guess it's a bad cliche on my part. But No, no, let's say no, it's not. Slipped, I just it's just slipped all, on the whirlpool. No. <laughs> but but it's just amazing to me. It is baked in to the sayings that have been around for as long as you and I have been around, but I'm not aware of anyone ever actually doing it. And I don't regard a banana peel as all that slippery. I guess you'd have to step on it just right, and it, you know, out goes your foot and down goes your ass. Anyway, um, here's an idea that someone raised with me several weeks ago, and I forgot about it, and now it's finally bursting through the neurons in my brain. If Baker Mayfield really wants out, if he really wants to be released by the Browns, there's something he could do, and it's akin to something his now nemesis OBJ did back in... Early November. Remember what he did, Peter? Gave up some money. You want out? Hey, Baker, you want out? Let's cut that 18-8 in half. Let's come, let's strike a deal where we save some of our money and you get to go somewhere else right now. And maybe the the Browns hope that Baker Mayfield presses pause on being pissed off about the circumstance and thinks, hmm, maybe if I just say I'll take half of what you owe me, that's a lot to give up. It's a lot to give up, especially when you're going to pay half of it in taxes anyway. But if that's the ticket out, and the sooner you get out, the sooner you lay the foundation for what comes next, and you handpick the best destination with an eye toward 2023, that's what he needs to be thinking about. 2023, I need to be in a place where I can play and play well and set the table for myself for 23. He doesn't want to be part of an awkward dance in Cleveland when teams are evaluating him for next year. Because, you know, when you talk about the Browns saying, you just stay home and we'll wait for the banana peel or something else slippery, uh, Mayfield may say, no, I'm showing up. You got to deal with me. I'm going to be here every day with bells on. I'm not going. I'm not going to be a problem. I'm going to be. I'm going to be extremely well behaved. He'll be the ultimate Eddie Haskell since we're making very dated references today. He will do and say everything he's supposed to, no matter what is raging inside of him. He will give them no reason to be upset. And but you got to deal with me. You already got 22 distractions from your starting quarterback. What's another distraction? Here I am. Deal with me. So th- this is. This is a mess, and it all flows from the Browns' stubbornness. You know, the 49ers are stubborn, the Browns are stubborn. And the Browns are determined to get value for this asset that they have without fully acknowledging the human problems they're inviting by clinging to Baker Mayfield's contract. I honestly don't think the 49ers are being stubborn at all. I think they were they were going to be able to trade Jimmy Garoppolo before he had the shoulder surgery once he had the shoulder surgery, that flew out the window, I think. But Mike, here's the other part of this that to me, you need to think about. Let's say if Baker Mayfield said, hey, let's, let's, let's cut the check in half. And let's say that I will shut up and go away and be a good boy for $9.4 million. Let's just say that or whatever the number is. All right. Then comes this problem. Where do you go where you're going to get a real opportunity to play this year? Yep. Suppose you say that, you pick Carolina, 
and Sam Darnold starts the year on a roll and you're stuck and there's been three quarterback injuries out there during training camp and in the first two weeks of the season. What, that's why I say, just wait. Here's the thing that, you know, I think the viewers need to realize that, yes, it's $18.9 million. It's basically $1.1 million a week that Baker Mayfield is going to make in 2022 as of now. But understand this. He will not make a dime until the Tuesday after Labor Day. That's when, if you're on a roster, and correct me if I'm wrong on my exact date, but if he's on a roster on the day after Labor Day, he's eligible for week one pay. So then the Browns would have to pay him his $1.1 million weekly salary. It is $18.9 million divided by 18. That's the number of game weeks. So $1.01 million in essence, or $1.05 million. So the bottom line in this is he can wait and the Browns can wait to find a team that actually might need him. Or he could guess and probably guess wrong and be left just to shake his head on October 18th when he said, oh my God, there's three teams that I know I could be playing for right now. You make a great point. And I don't want to get bogged down in what I'm about to say next, but the 2020 CBA did adjust the way guys are paid to spread it over a longer period of time and into the off season. So they don't have this concentration of extreme wealth for four months and nothing for eight months. So there's a chance Isn't he's that already the getting option? paid. Well, and maybe, and maybe he opted. That's something that's, you've given me something that if I remember after the show, I'm going to poke around to see if Baker Mayfield is already yeah. receiving checks from the Cleveland Browns, but it's a good point. Um, if he hasn't opted to do that and if he's waiting for the full 18-8. But either way, he's, he's, getting, he's got 18-8 in the bank. As long as he doesn't give the Browns a reason unrelated to skill injury or cap to cut him. And then there would be a grievance and they, they last forever. And But still, that, that would be a path away from it. And when you have a chief strategy officer, you assume he strategizes and that would be at least a data point that you take into consideration as you come up with your strategy. But, you know, the the broader point now is there isn't a destination. And you're right. It's beneficial to the Browns and him to wait. But, Peter, wh what what do you really – I mean, look, Teddy Bridgewater is once in 50 years. A non-contact practice, a walkthrough in late August, and they're all walkthroughs, where his knee – completely gives out. Now it's entirely possible he had suffered the injury during limited duty in the Chargers preseason game that happened just a few days before that, and then the knee went the rest of the way in that walkthrough. That's what happened to Deshaun Watson. He suffered his torn ACL, he told us, at the Super Bowl a few years ago against the Seahawks, and it went at a walkthrough practice three days later. But the chances of that happening, think of how limited the exposure is of starting quarterbacks in the preseason now. They've got the red jersey on all the time. You just don't get injured like we see injuries at other positions. So you're really waiting for something that most likely isn't going to happen if you're waiting for an injury. Now, if you're waiting for ineffectiveness and for a team to look around and say, what the hell are we going to do now? Maybe. But even then, Peter, even, even if it's injury or ineffectiveness, what do we hear all the time from these teams? And maybe this was just the mechanism to keep Colin Kaepernick out of the league. But what do we hear? We hear next man up. Next man up. We're fine with who we have. We have somebody who knows our offense. We'd rather go with somebody who knows what we do and not have to get a stranger up to speed. So I, I don't know that that would be a roadblock for Baker Mayfield, but we have to at least take that into account. You know, the Vikings had Sean Hill as the backup to Teddy Bridgewater. So they, they go scorched earth trying to find somebody else, and it was to the benefit of the Eagles who got a one and a four for Sam Bradford. I don't know what a team is going to do if they lose a quarterback because the next question is, who's our backup? And are we comfortable going with him instead of making this deal with the Browns, who will then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll rub their hands together and wait to do a hard bargain with this new team. So um, I think it's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of contingencies. And it, 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 they may run this all the way up to the trade deadline. It may be just like OBJ in that they run it all the way up to the trade deadline and then cut him. 
Yeah, I mean, Mike, I would look one more time at the Minnesota Vikings, and I'd look at Sean Mannion, and I'd look at Kevin O'Connell. He's not married to Sean Mannion. Now, maybe he'll fall in love with him this year in the offseason. I don't know. But I look at teams that don't have really good backup situations. But anyway, be that as it may, I mean, to me, if you're Baker Mayfield, one of the reasons why I'm not cutting that deal with the Cleveland Browns right now is there isn't an obvious team that I would say, hey, I'd really love to be there. Well, I mean, look, maybe he would say Carolina. But now, especially after drafting a rookie quarterback that they seem to have some interest in, you know, I think, you know, it was really telling to me. And one of the reasons why I ended up thinking right before the draft that the Carolina Panthers are taking a tackle is that David Tepper came out a few days before the draft at their draft press conference and said essentially that we got to be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day. This is a long process. I've got to be more patient. And I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just said, they're taking a tackle. And they're not going to take the quarterback, even if they're a little bit tempted to do so. And Mike, you know what? I don't ever think they were overwhelmingly tempted to take Kenny Pickett. I think they thought it would be an interesting way to go about it. But <clears throat> in essence, they have learned, I think, over the last year or so, our line stinks. And if we <laughs> don't fix that line, it doesn't matter if we get Joe Montana at quarterback. It doesn't matter. We eventually are going to get the quarterback hurt. We're not going to be able to run the ball well enough. Let's take the best tackle that we can find. And that's exactly what this draft became for them. Bottom line for the Browns and Baker Mayfield, if everything was working towards some sort of a negotiated compromise and everybody was on the same page and they understood that there's a benefit to patience and there's a plan that Baker Mayfield has bought into, that article wouldn't have happened yesterday. That article, to me, I when agree. you look at all totally. of the various things totally. in there, it, that, that, that article is an effort by Mayfield to to get out of Cleveland. And the Browns know him well enough to know that that's how he does business. That's one of the problems. The Browns, from what I've heard, Peter, and you may have heard the same thing, the Browns have become exasperated, not just with how he is to deal with in the building, but with the idea that he runs, they believe, to the media. Or someone close to him runs to the media with any and all grievances he may have. And it's one of the reasons they decided they had enough of him. To me, I think they look at Baker Mayfield as nettlesome. I, you know, and when you have a quarterback who is nettlesome, who's not going to be on the same page with everybody on the team in the organization, then they've got a problem with that. And look, I am, I, I must say about all this, if I'm Baker Mayfield, I am angry about a lot of things. And rightfully so. Last year, he played knowing that, and again, I, I, I personally, I really like Case Keenum as a backup quarterback a lot. But Baker Mayfield, I, you know, took it on himself to say, I am going to play until they have to drag me off the field. And because, you know, I want to give us the best chance to win, plus I want to play. I, this is how I was raised. If you can walk and chew gum at the same time, you're playing football, okay? And so that is why, to me, he's mad right now that he sacrificed uh, his season last year. He could have pulled a Ben Simmons, you know, probably with a hangnail, but he could have pulled a Ben Simmons and just said, hey, man, I'm not healthy enough to play. And nobody would have, nobody really would have said anything to about him. And they would have done this surgery. Maybe he would have come back before the end of the year. Maybe not. Who knows? But if I were Baker Mayfield, I would have ended last season. And especially after they're flirting with Deshaun Watson 
as a real angry young man. Having said all that, though, at some point, you got to take a deep breath. And Mike, I'm going to change the subject, but you'll understand why I'm changing the subject. I had a half hour conversation yesterday with Tyron Matthew. And I said to him, Tyron, the last two years in Kansas City were two of your best years in the NFL. And you don't even get a contract offer of any kind from Kansas City. That's That's got to hurt, basically, you know. And he goes, it really hurt. And But he reminded me of how Bobby Wagner talked after what happened in Seattle. He basically said, I love Andy Reid. I love that organization. And yeah, am I disappointed? Without any question, I'm angry. But I have to look at the long view. And I have to look at the way life sometimes doesn't go exactly what you want. They don't want a 30-year-old safety. They don't want to pay him any guaranteed money. Okay, I think that's a huge mistake, but whatever. They decided to do that. I had to take a few deep breaths so I didn't pop off. And, and, and that, to me, is probably the difference between a veteran guy who has seen the landscape, who knows that life isn't always fair in the NFL, and a guy like Baker Mayfield, who now if he has any had anything to do with that story, is basically going scorched earth. And now if you're the Browns, and if I'm the Browns, and truly, if I'm the Browns and I had nothing to do with that story yesterday, I'm going to say, okay, let's just let Baker sit and, and lob his Molotov cocktails at Berea, Ohio from Texas. And we're just going to ignore him. The one thing that really struck me of all of the various bits and pieces that were contained in the ESPN article, and we have a breakdown of it at PFT. We have a link back to the article if you want to read the whole thing. It's long, but there's a lot there. The one thing that really struck me, the belief from Baker Mayfield's camp that Week 17, Monday Night Football at Pittsburgh, they tried to make him look hapless they tried to make him look inept they tried to make him look bad and left him in the game all the way until the end when he threw an interception just to justify the plan the strategy the thing that they ultimately did which was go hunting for a new franchise quarterback and ultimately getting Deshaun Watson that to me suggested they're going to have one hell of a time mending fences. That these fences are unmendable between Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. If he and his camp believe that they set out to make him look bad in prime time, so it would be easier to justify this big move that they were plotting in the offseason. I mean, you know, I'm sure. If Kevin he believes that, right or wrong. That, yeah. Right or yeah. wrong. But if I he mean, believes that, Peter, how do you get yeah. him to unbelieve that? I, I, I mean, it just, it's a great example of why you should move on at quarterback. Do you think Kevin Stefanski or, or anybody in that organization said, this guy has played, whether we like him as a person or not, he's played heroically this year. Uh, heroically is the wrong word. He's played through significant injury this year. So let's put him out on national TV and embarrass him. I mean, that is such a ridiculous contention. Uh, uh, dysfunctional if, teams do if dysfunctional things. Yeah, yeah. That, maybe wasn't Stefanski's Mike, call. Mike, I can tell you maybe this. Maybe wasn't his I call. I can tell you this. Maybe it's Paul D. Podesta's I call. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. If they did that, some of those people should be fired and never hired in the NFL again. Period. I mean, that's, that's, that is cruel and unusual punishment if that happened. To me, that's a ridiculous statement. Well, but Mayfield and or his camp believe it, which illustrates how badly things have gone between player and team and how this is going to continue to be a thing. And you're right. The Browns' best approach for now is to ignore it, say nothing, do nothing, and hope and wait and pray that somewhere, somehow, 
an opportunity arises to trade Baker Mayfield. I, I, you know, I've been saying from the get-go, once you do your deal with Deshaun Watson, once you decide to give him five years, $230 million, fully guaranteed, you make the trade, he's your guy. Just treat Baker Mayfield as a sunk cost and move on. This idea that we're going to cling to this contract, that this is a commodity that we own, this gets back to something Sims and I were talking about yesterday. The idea that that teams own players. You know, we, we've, we've started to see the league get away from that. They're allowing players who aren't happy to find other situations for themselves. The Packers trading Devontae Adams to the team he wanted to play for. Tyreek Hill being traded to the team he wanted to play for. Other players, A.J. Brown, getting out of Tennessee and going to Philadelphia. The attitude of, we have this piece of paper that you signed your name to, therefore we can do whatever the hell we want, and you can't say a damn thing about it if you're happy or not. I talked to Chris Ballard about this the other day. He thinks that, and I think more teams realize this, it's not good for your team if you have people there who don't want to be there. It just is not a presence that is conducive to winning football games. And he he borrowed the Mike Tomlin quote, we want volunteers not hostages. And I think more teams are realizing that. And it makes it more glaring, Peter, when there's a team that re- retreats to the old school mindset. You signed a contract. You live with it. Oh, you don't want to be here? Too bad. You signed a contract. We own you. Too bad. You're not happy? Too bad. Too bad. I, I, my, uh, my, well, I used to say to my mom, I'm mad. I don't, I, I, I'm making no comment on whether or not this was appropriate parenting. It wouldn't be appropriate today. She'd say, rub your ass and get glad. It worked. You can't do that anymore to play. I mean, look, this is not how it works in the NFL. If a guy's mad, if a guy's unhappy, you're only hurting your own interests and forcing him to stick around. So, long point bearable, why do they insist? Why not just set him, why not just be done with it, accept it as part of the cost of getting Deshaun Watson? That was an issue for when they got Deshaun Watson. And maybe they should have done that at the time, Mike. Um, but to do it now, uh, you know, and again, we don't know exactly how this story came about and some of the accusations in this story, but I almost think now it's the classic case of if you play your cards right, if you work behind the scenes, give me my release, you know, let's do the right thing. But it's almost like, uh, you know, it's almost like Baker Mayfield has an epee, you know, or a little sword or, or, or something. And he's just, he's just digging it into him continually. I'll show you guys. I'm going to get angry. I am going to get my revenge for having gotten jobbed for playing hurt last year. This is my reward. You go sign a guy for $230 million guaranteed without ever telling me that this was a real chance that this was going to happen. So I'll get you. And, and look, what's the right thing to do right now? At least right now, if I were the Browns, I'd hang on to them until somebody out there really needed a quarterback. The Browns are the only team in the NFL that I know of that has a chief strategy officer. And sometimes the best strategy is no strategy. And just not overthink it. Don't outsmart yourself. Don't overcomplicate your life. And think of the human factors at play here. And even if it is a bad precedent or even if you may get criticized by you know uh, by your peers oh i can't believe the browns didn't get anything for baker mayfield they're a bunch of idiots so what there's a point where you just have to rip off the band-aid and move on they should have done it when they traded for deshaun watson and the longer this lasts they know what they're dealing with and unless their grand plan peter is to sit and wait for baker mayfield to cross a line that allows them to say you get cut and you don't get paid. Even that, you don't want that. You don't want a Terrell Owens situation from 2005. Look what that did to the Eagles. They didn't make it to the playoffs that year, and they had a team that had just nearly won the Super Bowl the prior season. You don't want that kind of poisonous attitude and mindset and dysfunction in your team. That's what the Browns should have realized weeks ago, and the sooner they realize it, the better off they'll be. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.